Doing well in your career but looking to do better? At DBS, we want you to get to where you want to go with part-time postgraduate, evening degrees and professional diploma courses taught by people as successful at what they do as they are at teaching it. Kickstart your career with real-world learning. Apply today at dbs.ie. The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with Hi, a neighbor. Sentimental people. Well, if you look at our national songs, both folk songs and popular, I think you'll have to admit that we are. I'll confess there's one old number that always gets me a little, Home Sweet Home. And in these troubled times, I'm sure that line, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home, is taking on a little more meaning for us all. Shall I tell you one thing I like about this job of mine? There's real satisfaction in knowing that Johnson's wax products help to make your home and mine more beautiful, more enjoyable. You've noticed, of course, how floors that are richly polished with genuine Johnson's wax make an entire home more attractive. And that same wax polish used on furniture and woodwork, windowsills, Venetian blinds, and many other surfaces not only beautifies them, but also protects them, makes them last longer, and saves you hours of work all during the year. In fact, I don't know many products that offer so much service and so much satisfaction at such low cost as genuine Johnson's Wax, paste, cream, or liquid. Try some tomorrow. Life has settled down to comparative normalcy at 79 Westville Vista. The master of the manor is taking a shower in his masterful manner. While the lady of the house is serving tea to Mrs. Uppington, who is to local society what a dodger used to be to Brooklyn. <laughs> Come in and meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Isn't this rather an odd time of day for Mr. McGee to be taking a bath? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's been playing golf all morning, Abigail, and I encourage that because he's getting quite a little tummy on it. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed it. Well, you know, I hadn't either till the other day when we were shopping at the grocery. We were just leaving when the grocery man gave McGee a dirty look and said, Don't you want a paper bag for that watermelon, Mr. McGee? <laughs> Do you play golf, Abigail? Oh, uh, not since the morning I was insulted. Well, I didn't hear about that. Well, I was just about to tee off when I heard a caddy say, Whose old bag is that? <laughs> and then another caddy said, Mine. I caddy for her all the time. Oh, well, how awful. I don't wonder that. Oh, pardon me. 79 was for this amount of McGee speaking. Who? No, Mr. McGee is in the bathroom. Or, I mean, he's not available just at the moment. An important message? Well, now, just a minute. I'll see if he can come to the telephone. Uh, you'll pardon me a minute, Abigail. Oh, of course, my dear. Oh, I had a little dog, and his name was Adam. He never scratched sleeves, but we knew he had him. Oh, McGee. Oh, McGee. Who is it? Now, who do you think would come busting in here while you were taking a shower? <laughs> the floor door six hat? <laughs> Go away. I ain't dressed. McGee, it's a phone call for you. They said it was very urgent. Oh, well, well, you take the message. All right, but it may be pretty important. Get dressed quick and come out. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Hand me that bridge pad and that little pencil, Abigail. Yes. Thank you. Hello? Uh, no, Mr. McGee can't come to the phone just now. I'll take the message. 
And you can go as fast as you like. I'm taking it to shorthand. Yes. Uh, Fibber McGee, 79, with Felicia. Yes. Need you. Yes. Urgently. Yes, yes. Worth $50,000. Yes, I have that. Yes. Who, Jim? Let you know when? Oh, by tomorrow. Yes, well, thank God. See that Mr. McGee gets it right away. Goodbye. Heavenly days, this must be important. Well, where on earth did you ever learn shorthand, you clever girl? The same place I first met McGee, at business college. I studied stenography, and he studied... Oh, hi, Uppy. Uh, hey, Molly, where's that phone message? Oh, what was it? What'd they say? Well, I wrote it all down. Here you are. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Trevor McGee, 79, was for Vista. <laughs> hey, what is this? Chinese, or have I still got soap in my eyes? <laughs> It's your hand, Mr. McGee, oh. and it must be very important. It says it's worth $50,000, and they must know by tomorrow, and somebody named Jim. Well, who's Jim, and what's he got to know by tomorrow? Gee whiz, $50,000. Uh, read it to me, Molly. Uh, read it, quick. All right, give it here. Yes. Yeah. It says, uh... <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> I always was better at writing shorthand than I was at reading. Oh. Oh, now, now calm yourself, Miss McGee. Yeah. I'm sure it will all come back to her in a moment. Well, uh, can't you remember what they said, my dear? Why, yeah. no. In shorthand, they train you to concentrate on what you're writing, not on what's being said. Now, let me see. I think this squiggly little pothole here being... Uh, no, <laughs> no, it doesn't either. Not well, unless it has a loop on the Oh, end. but Molly... <laughs> Molly, you've got to read it. i got to know. Stop fussing. What if I can't remember how to read it? We'll find somebody that can. Yeah, but who was it that called? The Jim, Jim who? Cert certainly you remember that. Well, I wrote it right down here, but... Oh, my, I wrote that in shorthand, too. <laughs> 50,000 bucks and they got to know by tomorrow, and I don't know, and I don't know who it is. Take either. it easy, dearie. Take it easy. Maybe they'll call again. And why should they call again? They figured that any guy that was worth $50,000 to him would at least have an efficient secretary. The dumbbells. Who? Anybody that would pay you $50,000. Oh, yeah. Now, you look here, Mrs. McGee. I'll have you know Wait that... a minute, McGee. Uncle Dennis, I think he can read shorthand. Oh, I think so, too, Mrs. McGee. He's such an educated gentleman. Someone told me he's always bringing some teachers home with him. <laughs> well, I'll try anybody. Where is Uncle Dennis? He's gone out. Uh, pardon me, Miss McGee. May I make a suggestion? Why, of course, Abigail. Go ahead. Uppy, if you can get me out of this spot, I'm your friend for life. And I wouldn't care if I lived for several years. <laughs> what is it? Well, I was just about to suggest that perhaps if Mrs. McGee remembered what system of shorthand she learned in business college, she might purchase one of the instruction books. Oh, and... heavenly days. Just the thing. McGee, I think I still have my old shorthand book. Oh, boy, that's wonderful. Where is it? Right in there. Oh, hold everything. I'll get it. <laughs> Got to straighten out that closet one of these days. <laughs> Tilton sings, Tin Ling Lo is Feeling High. On the Yangtze River, near the Yangtze Stadium, lived a little China boy. Fate was mighty fickle, never had a nickel, didn't have a single toy. He took a rifle, a pair of chopsticks, he learned to beat out a lot of hot legs. Now as he drums, he remarks with a grin, Today I am a man, the rin. Ling Ling Lo is feeling high, He's got rhythm in his eye. Little China drummer makes the chopsticks fly, Beating the blues away. Ling Ling Lo is feeling high, He's a boogie-woogie guy. Taught him how to swing the Chinese lullaby, to hear him play. China's in an awful quandary. There's no one 
to do the laundry. Shop, 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 it closed up shop. Every Hong Kong song is beating the gong. Ding, ling, low is feeling high. He's the coach of old Shanghai. Little China drummer makes the chopstick fly. Beating the blues away. the mango. Shop, shop, shop. Close up shop. King Ling Lo is feeling high. He's the toast of old Shanghai. Little China drummer makes the chopstick fly. Feeding the blues, feeding the blues away. Stop worrying, McGee. Stop worrying. We'll find somebody who can read shorthand. Yeah, but time, Molly, time. This Jim says he's got to know tomorrow, whoever Jim is. I don't know any Jim. Well, now, listen, who's this Jim Jordan you're always talking about? Oh. The guy in Kansas City. He's got a bottling work. <laughs> Couldn't be him. I hope Uppy was right in Uncle Dennis can read shorthand. I wonder where he is. Well, I don't know, but it's high time he was coming home again. You mean it's time he was coming home high again. <laughs> but gee whiz, with 50,000 bucks at stake, I can't afford to waste all... Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. I'm sorry I haven't got time to talk to you now. I got worried. Mister, what I always say is, if something worries you, talk it out with somebody. All my life I've done that. All but... your life? Why, you're not dry behind the ears yet, sis. I know it. I just had my hair washed. Say, maybe you have got an idea about talking it over, sis. It might make me think of something. Now, here's the trouble. I got an important message over the phone, see? Who oh, from? I don't know. But it's... What is it about? I don't know. You see the... Well, mis- where was it from, mister? I don't know. I was busy... Gee, take... I'd hate to send you an important message, I bet you. Are you ever dumb? <laughs> Doggone it, sis. Mrs. McGee took the message down in shorthand. Well, she's and... dumb, too. <laughs> and now she can't read it. And neither can I. Now, what would you do in a case like that? <laughs> you got me, pal. <laughs> You're a big help. Remember, there's 50,000 bucks involved, and that ain't peanuts. Hmm? I says that ain't peanuts. I'm I not... don't care if you are. <laughs> Now, run along and leave me to my words. I want some peanuts. I haven't got any peanuts. But you just said... I said I had a deal involving $50,000 and I... $50,000 and he won't buy a hungry little girl some peanuts. No. Wait till Winslow hears about this. <laughs> I can read her future in the palm of her father's hand. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> hey, Molly. Yes, dearie. Uh, you got anywhere figuring out that shorthand? Well, I'm making a little progress. You see this little twisty mark here? Yes, 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 yes. yes. What does it mean? Well, it means either expect, accept, aspect, inspect, or respect. <laughs> I'm not quite sure because I'm so rusty. Rusty? You're corroded. <laughs> Think, Molly, think. I can't kiss $50,000 goodbye. Well, I should say you can't. No. You know very well money is covered with germs. <laughs> That's probably why i always been so healthy. Never handled enough of it. <laughs> oh, I wish I could think of who might help me. Hi, Hi. Fibber. Hello, Molly. Oh, just the one I wanted to see. Mr. Wilcox, do you understand shorthand? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do we mean? That was a simple enough question. Do you understand shorthand or don't you? Well, I can't write it or read it if that's what you mean. But I know what it is. It's a wonderful thing. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's a fearful and wonderful thing. <laughs> Especially if you get a yen to toss 50,000 smackers out the window. Very useful. What are you talking about? Well, I took a telephone message for McGee in shorthand, Mr. Wilcox. Something about an urgent matter involving $50,000, and somebody named Jim had to have an answer tomorrow, and now I can't read the message. Well, see, this is a tough spot. 
Well, my wife knows shorthand. What? She does? She does? She surely does. <laughs> she says it was very useful to her in college. She's always telling me that shorthand is sort of like Johnson's self-polishing glow coat because it's the new and easy way to do an old and hard job. Why, when you stop to think that... Wilcox, please, I'm getting desperate. You've got 37 weeks to tell about glow coats, and I only got a few hours left to get that 50000 bucks. Oh, don't be so selfish. No. What's a mere $50,000 when you can save a million housewives hours and hours of linoleum scrubbing? Oh. <laughs> Why... Why, when you consider that Johnson's glow coat shines as it dries with absolutely no rubbing or buffing in 20 minutes or less. Oh, my God. <laughs> Saves your hands from that rough, grub bucket look. <laughs> oh, hey, Molly, Molly, quick, get Fibber a glass of water. He looks dizzy. Oh, dear, McGee, sit down, dearie. Take it easy. I'm okay. It was that stuff about having rough hands. That's, that's what got me. <laughs> but, McGee, your hands are nice and smooth. I know. I can feel $50,000 slipping right through. Say, Mr. Wilcox, will you please ask your wife to run over and help me read this shorthand message? Well, I don't think you... You said she knew shorthand. Give me my hat, Molly. I'll run over to Wilcox's and see her. I'll be back in just... Hey, wait a minute. Better take a clean shirt. What's the matter with the one he's got on? It'll get soiled on the train. My wife is in Oak Park, Illinois, visiting her mother. (laughs) Sorry, Fibber. I hope you get somebody to read it for you. wouldn't give up a sales talk for any amount of money. He's like an Indian who just ran out of chewing tobacco. Why? Hmm. No cut plus. <laughs> you realize what this means to us, Molly? 50,000 bucks would mean redecorating the house, make a setting for my bare skin rug when I get it, a, a new car, and a mink coat for you. A mink coat? Well, heavenly days, what are we standing around here for? We've got to get busy, McGee. You can't do this to me. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but what the... Who... We'll scar the town for somebody who can read shorthand. Come on, we'll start with this. Ah, Dad's rat is another story. It's a plot, that's what it is. Somebody don't want me to make $50,000. It's the bankers. It's Wall Street. They, they want me to stay insoluble. You mean unsolvable. I do not. I mean insoluble. Insoluble means it won't dissolve in a liquid. That's what I say. They don't, they don't want me to melt. They're, they're trying to freeze my assets. <laughs> oh, come in. Oh, hiya, Billy. Hello, Skimp. Hello, baby. <laughs> Hello, Billy. Say, can you read shorthand? Not me, beautiful. Never got around to it. My family went bust at night to leave grammar school and go to work. Oh, that, that's tough, Bill. Uh, how old were you then, Billy? Just a kid. Twenty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the gal says when she shoved the drummer through the bass drum, it's a good thing you had your music to fall back on, Billy. Oh. That's what I say, Skimp. My old man told me one day, Billy said we can't keep you in school anymore. You'll have to make other arrangements. And you did. I'll say I did. I had made a thousand other arrangements. Here's one I made at the Cowboy Serenade for the King's Men. Listen.
I'm getting discouraged, Molly. We've been all over town. That's 19 people and two strangers. <laughs> None of them can read short. Miss Berg is practically illiterate. Now, now, don't give up, Billy. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> they were probably shorthanded, too. <laughs> Not bad, eh? <laughs> McGee, I don't know where you get them, but you better put them back if you can reach that far. <laughs> well, come on, let's get busy. I can feel my mink coat slowly changing back to rabbit. Hey, here comes Wallace Wimple. Let's ask him. Hey, Wimple. Hello, Mr. Wimple. How's our little poet today? Oh, greetings, folks, on this Thanksgiving. Aren't we glad that we are living turkey and dressing and cranberry sauce? Let's shout our joy with loud hurrah. What's the idea, Wimple? This ain't Thanksgiving. I know, Mr. McGee. That's a greeting card verse I wrote just this morning. I wanted to see how you like it. Just trying it on the dog, you might say. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> I'm afraid you're barking up the wrong dog today, Mr. Wimple. McGee is hardly in a Thanksgiving mood. Oh, dear. Whatever is the matter, Mr. McGee? <laughs> Nothing that $50,000 wouldn't cure, Wimple. Hey, do you read shorthand? No, I don't, Mr. McGee. <laughs> I... Did I say something funny? <laughs> I... I started to learn it once, but my wife made me give it up. <laughs> Jealous, you know. <laughs> Jealous of shorthand? Yes, indeed. I was practicing it one day while she was doing some ironing, and she said, What are you studying, Wallace? And I said, Shorthand, sweetie face. And she said, Will I be able to read it, Wallace? And I said, No, sweetie face. And she said, That's fine, Wallace. And patted me on the head with a flat iron. <laughs> I'll bet that fizzled your hair, Wimple. Yes, it did. And then she hit me again because she thought I was hissing at her. <laughs> she, she's so impressionist, you know. You poor lad. How on earth do you stand all that abuse, Mr. Wimple? Oh, she's really a lovely woman, Mrs. McGee. She has a heart of solid gold. Solid gold, eh? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes I like to think of her buried deep in Fort Knox. <laughs> oh, but I, I see you're fidgeting, Mr. McGee, so I'll just run along now and do an errand for the little woman. Tell me, do you know of a good Potawatomi carpenter? A Potawatomi carpenter? No, we don't, Wimple. Why? My wife splintered one of her Indian clubs. Well, goodbye now. <laughs> Let me browbeat you like that. If I had a brow as low as Wimple's, you could do it sitting down. <laughs> Why, that poor guy is... McGee, my mink coat. What mink coat? The one I'm going to buy with that $50,000? Well, come on, then. Let's get going. <laughs> Bud, you're the official court reporter for the circuit court here, ain't you? Oh, yes, I am. Why? Well, as citizens of this community, we want to ask you a favor. Why, of course. Be glad to do anything I can for you. Uh -huh. Good for you, Bud. You know shorthand, don't you? Oh, certainly. I'm an expert in shorthand. Oh, that's wonderful. McGee, call the Bonton Department Store and see how late the fur department keeps up. Oh, you've got lots of time. Look, Bud, here. Read this message for us, will you? Oh, of course. It says, Fibber McGee, 79 Wistful Vista. Why? Right. You are urgently requested. Hey, yeah. Charlie. Yeah? You're wanted in court. Take a snack. Okay. Gee, I'm sorry, folks. Come back uh, again some other time. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, Come on, McGee. The information desk is right over here. Yeah, these librarians are supposed to know everything. Uh, hey, sis. Not so loud, please. People are trying to read. Oh, we're sorry. Hey, can you read shorthand? No, I'm sorry. You're sorry? <laughs> Well, how about it, old-timer? Can you read shorthand? No, Johnny! Never try! Same thing as longhand, ain't it? Only shorter? No. 
No, it isn't, Mr. Oldtimer. Here, now, here's what we're trying to have read. Now, that's shorthand. Yeah. <laughs> Don't kid me, daughter. That ain't writing. Them's a lot of Egyptian hieroglyphians. <laughs> that, Brad, it is not. That's shorthand. And if I don't get this message translated by morning, I'm out 50,000 bucks. Yes, and it'll throw three interior decorators, an automobile salesman, and a mink coat out of work. <laughs> That's pretty good, Dory. But that ain't the way I hear it. The way I hear it, one fellow says to... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Who wrote them hand tracks? Well, I did. Why? Uh, where'd you learn to do it, daughter? At the Wistful Vista Business College. Oh, uh, you silly kids. Why don't you go down there and ask them? Oh, my gosh, I never thought of that. Come on, Molly. Hurry up. Thanks, old timer. Heavenly days. Aren't we the dumbbells, McGee? I'll say, as the hungry flea says when he walked across the elephant, I sure have been overlooking the obvious. <laughs> I'm in there pitching anyway. <laughs> well, the old business college sure looks the same, don't it? Say, I wonder if Hamilton Quigley is still the manager. Come on, let's go in. Okay. Hey, there's old Quigley right there. Hey, Mr. Quigley, can we see you a minute? Oh, certainly, sir. Right into my office. Fine. Well, 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 Molly Driscoll and Fibber McGee. Oh, I'm Mrs. McGee now, Mr. Quigley. Well, well, congratulations. I hope you'll be very happy. Allow me to kiss the bride. No, Mr. Quigley. Mm. Oh. Gee whiz. Quit blushing, Molly. You've outgrown that stuff. <laughs> now, look, Quig, old Twig. I got a very important message from some, some guy named Jim. And I... A message? Oh, that reminds me, McGee. I called you just this morning. Odd coincidence, isn't it? Well, you must have got the wrong number, Mr. Quigley. I don't remember. Well, someone took the message in shorthand. What? In, uh, in shorthand? Oh, yes, yes. We were urgently requesting Mr. McGee, as one of our prominent alumni, to preside at the dedication of our new $50,000 gym. <laughs> $50,000. Jim. Glad you stopped in because we had to know by tomorrow morning. But first, uh, what was it you wanted to see me about? Uh, why, why, what's the matter, Mr. McGee? Molly. Yes, uh, yes, yes, Daddy. Better let him kiss you again. You might as well get something out of this. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment. In the meantime, there's something I wanted to be sure to mention tonight. It's that matter of taking extra good care of your automobile so it will not only last longer, but give you greater pleasure, too. You know, it's one thing to have the motor and tires and brakes in good condition, but if the outside of your car looks old and dingy, there isn't much fun driving it, is there? Why don't you decide right now to keep your car looking its best, shining like new, with economical, easy-to-use Johnson's Car New? The modern polish that both cleans and wax polishes in one application. Now, if you still think of wax polishing as a hard, tedious job, you've got a big surprise in store the first time you use Car New. And this is an awfully good month to get on the Car New bandwagon. You can enjoy the good fall days still ahead, and your car is ready for the bad weather when it comes. Ask for Johnson's Car New at your regular wax dealer, auto supply store, or service station. It's spelled C-A-R-N-U. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a long, cold, unhappy winter for a lot of people. Yes, but you can make it shorter, warmer, and happier by subscribing to your community chest. And we don't mean that your help will only last uh, through the winter, either. No, there's no closed season on generosity. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for the Home and for Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Question. What's the best polish for furniture? Answer. Johnson's Cream Wax. 
the newest form of wax polish made especially for furniture and woodwork. Because it's a wax polish, cream wax protects furniture, gives it a beautiful luster. Easy to use, contains no oil to collect dust. And here's an extra value. Dealers are now offering a tube of Johnson's Blem free with the 39-cent bottle of Johnson's Cream Wax. Blem is a marvelous blemish remover that takes off ugly white rings and stains from furniture. Get the combination package of Johnson's Cream Wax and Blem for only 39 cents. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.